week of gestation. Thinning occurs first over the lower back, wearing away as the fetal body curves forward into its mature, flexed position. Bald areas appear and become larger over the lumbosacral area. At term, most of the fetal back is devoid of lanugo, that is, the back is mostly bald. Variability in amount and location of lanugo at a given gestational age may be attributed in part to familial or national traits and to certain hormonal, metabolic, and nutritional influences. For example, infants of diabetic mothers characteristically have abundant lanugo on the pinna and upper back until close to or beyond full-term gestation. The third observation is the plantar surface. This item focuses on the major foot creases on the sole of the infant's foot. Very premature and extremely immature infants have no detectable foot creases. The first crease to appear is on the anterior sole at the ball of the foot. These creases may be related to foot flexion in utero and possibly also to dehydration of the skin. Infants of non-white origin have been reported to have fewer foot creases at birth. There is no known explanation for this. On the other hand, the reported acceleration of neuromuscular maturity in black infants usually compensates for this, resulting in a cancellation of the delayed foot crease effect. Hence, there is usually no over or underestimation of gestational age due to race when the total score is performed. To further help define the gestational age of these very immature infants, measuring the foot length or heel-toe distance is helpful. This is done by placing the infant's foot on a metric tape measure and noting the distance from the back of the heel to the tip of the great toe. For heel-toe distances between 40 and 50 millimeters, a minus one score is assigned. For those less than 40 millimeters, a minus two score is assigned. The fourth physical criterion in maturational assessment is the breast. The breast bud consists of breast tissue, stimulated to grow by maternal estrogens, and fatty tissue, which is dependent upon fetal nutritional status. The examiner notes the size of the areola and the presence or absence of stippling, which represents the developing papillae of Montgomery. The examiner then palpates the breast nodule beneath the skin by holding it between the thumb and forefinger, estimating its diameter in millimeters or measuring with a tape, and selects the appropriate square on the score sheet. Under and over nutrition of the fetus may cause variation in breast size at a given gestation. Also, maternal estrogen effect may produce neonatal gynecomastia, which usually appears on the second to fourth day of extrauterine life. The fifth physical criterion in maturational assessment is called eye ear. The pinna of the fetal ear changes its configuration and increases in cartilage content as maturation progresses. Assessment includes observation of the degree of curving or rolling of the edge of the pinna. The examiner then palpates the pinna of the ear for cartilage thickness, then folds the pinna toward the face and releases it. In more mature infants, the examiner notes the rapidity with which the folded pinna snaps back toward the scalp. In very immature infants, the pinna may remain folded when released. In such immature infants, the examiner also notes the state of development of the eyelids as an additional indicator of fetal maturation. These very immature infants will have tightly fused eyelids, 
that is, the examiner will not be able to separate either palpebral fissure with gentle traction. The slightly more mature infant will have one or both eyelids fused, but one or both may be partly separable by gentle light traction with the examiner's fingertips. These findings will allow the examiner to select minus two for tightly fused or minus one for loosely fused on the score sheet. The examiner should not be surprised to find a wide variation in eyelid fusion status in individual infants at a given gestational age, as timing of fetal eyelid opening may be affected by certain stress-related humoral factors. The final physical criterion involves careful examination of the infant's genitalia.